All right, folks, uh, Mr. Hanson here. We're going to take a look at uh, the second feature creation exercise here in our introduction to part design uh, course. And here we're going to look at using the Revolve tool. The Revolve tool is super handy uh, anytime we're trying to create something with circular symmetry. Uh, so, for example, the part that we're going to create is this, uh, let's see, wheel shaped thing. And then obviously it looks like a circle. Uh, now, we could create this using ex a couple different extrudes. It would take uh, two, three extrudes to create this piece. It's going to be a little bit quicker to do it uh, with the Revolve tool. Uh, so here I've got a new sketch, um, and I've got my sketch on the right plane, so I'm all set up to try this exercise. So I'm just going to walk through this real quick. Um, and what we're going to start with is just some uh, construction lines. So I'm going to hit L on my keyboard for the line tool. I'm going to click Q to make those construction lines, and I'm just going to draw uh, a horizontal line. Now, it's always good practice to keep things centered at the origin, so the easiest way to do this is to use the midpoint tool. So if you look on the right side of your toolbar, you should see a tool that says midpoint. And I'm going to click the line, click the point, and that's going to adjust things so that it's centered. Um, let me draw one more construction line going up. There we go. And that's going to let me get started uh, drawing the profile of this piece. And so uh, what we're going to think about this, we know this object's going to be revolved and it's going to be revolved around this bottom line. That's going to be my axis of revolution. Um, so what we're drawing is half of the profile of this revolve. So if you took that thing and sliced it down the middle, what would it look like? Um, that's what we're going to draw. And so we can kind of think of this as sort of the radius of the circle that I'm going to make. Um, and so I'm going to draw a couple lines. And I'm actually going to do a slight shortcut. I'm a little bit different from how it's done in the exercise. Um, and I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to only draw half of this uh, eye-shaped profile here. I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to go out a little bit. Do, do, do. Go down. Now, um, let me go out a little more. I think this is actually way too big, but we'll be all right. We'll get it figured out. Um, so I'm going to go out. I'm going to go down, making sure these lines are snapped to the horizontal. Um, and all the lines in this profile should be snapped to the horizontal or vertical, except for this one right here, which needs to be at a slight downward angle. So I'm just going to make that. This one should, again, make sure this one's snapped horizontally. Let me go out. And it's uh, okay if this doesn't look exactly like it does in the uh, exercise. We're still got to add dimensions and uh, uh, size things up a little bit. Um, now this is half the profile. Uh, I know that this particular design needs to be symmetric around this center line. And so you could mess with like the midpoint constraints. Um, but what I'm going to do is use the mirror tool. Um, it's up in the top toolbar. And what that's going to do is let me select a line. And then I can take all the things that I've drawn and reflect that across the line. And that's going to create objects that are centered with respect to this line, as well as take care of the next step, which is making things equal. Um, because I'm reflecting my objects over a line, they're guaranteed to be equal. So it saves me a little time having to enter in all these equals constraints. That, to me, a little bit quicker, uh, but it's up to you how you want to do that. All right, now we're going to go in and add some dimensions. I'm going to start with um, this angle here. It's a three-degree angle. So to create an angle. I'm going to hit D on my keyboard for dimension. I'm going to click these two lines and I want that to be just three degrees. Just barely not horizontal. Now things are probably going to get a little bit weird as I go in and add the rest of these uh, dimensions. So that's supposed to be 0.25. Um, I happen to have drawn this way too big. Uh, but as we go in and add the dimensions it should uh, shrink it down and make it look a little more reasonable. Let's see, the dimension across the top here. Ooh, that should be 1.5. Things are probably going to look pretty squished here until I add the vertical dimensions. All right, and that one should be 1.625. All right. So what I've got is a little squished because I drew it too big. Um, that's okay. In the next step, we're going to take care of that kind of vertical spread. Um, so uh, what we're doing here with because the shape has 
uh, rotational symmetry. What I'm essentially got on the screen is like the radius of what I'm going to rotate. Um, and so there's a trick here with the dimension tool. Anytime you have a line that's an axis of rotation or a line that you're reflecting across, um, you can actually dimension to where the object would be on the other side of that line. Let me explain. I'm going to do this dimension here at the bottom, which is 0.5. And you guys know, I can obviously dimension from you know this point to this line. That, that's something you hopefully have done quite a bit. Uh, but if I drag my cursor over on the other side of the line, uh, it's going to look at the dimension of that object where it would be flipped over across that line, which in this case with a revolve is going to be my uh, diameter of revolution. And so I need that diameter here to be 0.5. And you'll see as I go in and do the rest of these dimensions, it should uh, make my shape look a little more like it should be. So again, I don't want the dimension to the line. I want to flip it over the line. And it's starting to look a little more like I expect it now. Same deal here. Not, not to the line. I want to flip it over the line. 2.75. And one more dimension here. Uh, that should be three. All right, now that actually looks like it's proportional to what's in the exercise. Um, all the lines are black, meaning I've fully dimensioned this, so I should be good to go to start making this three-dimensional. So I'm going to hit the green check mark up here to save my sketch. Uh, and now I've got a complete closed contour, or closed profile here. Uh, I'm going to select the Revolve tool. It's right next to the Extrude tool. Um, that's the profile that I've selected. And the revolve axis is actually going to be this construction line, this uh, vertical line uh, that I had here. And you'll notice as soon as I've got those things clicked, um, that spins that profile around the axis, uh, similar to kind of how an extrude did, except we're doing this in a circle. Uh, and I've created, I've created something that's got circular symmetry. Um, and you can control how much of a uh, revolution this is um, so you can like do it you know just a little bit so it's like a 30 degree or 45 degree or 90 degree angle obviously if you want a full 360 that's going to be a full rotation um, and that's going to create uh, my object here so uh, one more thing with this exercise it asks you to play around with the appearance um, and you'll notice uh, once i've you know do an extrude or do uh, revolve or use one of my 3d features it's going to create a solid part and you'll see the parts populating down here in the parts list um, you can right click this part i um, mean you got options to like rename this so i can call this wheel um, you've also got uh, options to uh, change properties and so that'll let let you add information if you're trying to manage this in a professional setting um, i can also go to edit appearance and oops, I click material. Okay, well you can also go to edit material and select different materials, um, you know, ranging from plastics to silicone, aluminum, steel. Uh, Onshape's got a lot of materials loaded in there. Yeah, the one I want to look at is the edit appearance, which will let you assign different colors to this object. Um, and there's also one more thing that's super helpful, uh, especially if you're working with complicated parts that you know stuff might be hidden from view um, this little a down here that changes the opacity of the part that gives you kind of an x-ray view inside the part and so if you want to you know see you know kind of what this looks like inside if there's something like i said that might be hidden from view uh, that gives you kind of an x-ray view to let you see inside so you know stuff to play around with um, i think that's pretty self-explanatory uh, but, you know, give that a shot. Um, I think it's pretty easy once you figure out how to make your contour.